And the Central Bank of Kenya Governor Kamau Thuge says excess demand for the U.S. dollar is to blame for the depreciation of the Kenya shilling against the dollar. Dr. Thuge told the National Assembly's Finance and Planning Committee that the Kenyan shilling has for years been overvalued, according to the IMF and the World Bank. Seth Olale reports from Parliament. So, Chair, um, we're just starting with the issue of... Um... As CBK Governor Kamau Thuge was being questioned by the National Assembly Finance and Planning Committee over the unprecedented depreciation of the shilling against the dollar, the shilling was at the time trading at 150 against the U.S. dollar. Thuge citing excess demand for U.S. dollars as a major cause for the weakening of the Kenyan shilling. Uh, the demand has always been mostly been higher than supply. According to CBK, other factors contributing to the devaluation of the Kenyan shilling include lack of structural reforms to ensure that supply exceeds the demand sustainably, decline in international reserves, cost of evaluation of the exchange rate, the 2022 aggressive rise in interest rates in the U.S. to curb inflation. The CBK boss further revealing that the Kenan shilling has for years been overvalued by between 20 to 25 percent, according to the IMF and World Bank. That actually the exchange rate was overvalued by anywhere between 20 to uh, 25 percent. Uh, the CBK boss recommending the government and private sector to invest in medical tourism in order to escalate the flow of U.S. dollars into the country. The government also being called upon to invest in direct foreign investments as the country is only attracting a mere 1.7 percent of the GDP from foreign investments with reduction in imports failing from 13.2% to 11.4%. Thuge also mentioned that there will be a meeting with the IMF next week to discuss financial reforms and debt financing. So there was a gap between foreign interest and domestic uh, interest, and so there was uh, capital outflows. Uh, and that affected the exchange rate, and because there was already an overvaluation, Maybe our currency depreciated a bit higher. Good morning, Chair and members. My name is Paula Gonda, KRA, Media Relations Team. Also appearing before the National Assembly Finance and Planning Committee was Kenya Revenue Authority Commissioner General Humphrey Watanga, who revealed that the tax collector missed its revenue collection target by 75 billion shillings, despite registering a revenue collection growth of 8.4% in the first quarter of 2023. KRA collected 586.9 billion shillings in the period July to September 2023 compared to a collection of 541.6 billion shillings during the same period last year, failing to meet the quarter one target of 665.9 billion shillings, which translates to a deficit of 79 billion. We are convinced that uh, uh, we with the right support and resources, uh, we, can, we can come close to achieving those targets. And I'm glad that the conversation uh, also zeroed in on the support uh, that, that KRA needs. KRA has attributed the missing of its target to poor remittance of pay by the public sector, among other factors. With finance management being a critical issue during submissions before the National Assembly Finance and Planning Committee, the same legislators will be drafting a national tax policy framework with an aim of guiding the country towards resource management and remittance. Seth Olale, Citizen TV, at Parliament Buildings, Nairobi,